What's going on guys, this is Jin. In today's video, we're gonna go over CSES chapter 16. It's another very short chapter and it is on exercise technique for alternative modes and non-traditional implement training. Um, if you haven't checked out my other lectures, chapters one through 15 is not uploaded in the CSES lecture playlist. But if you have already, let's dive right into chapter 16. So general guidelines, um, breathing patterns that are recommended, they recommend exhaling through the sticking point which is where you're transitioning from the eccentric phase to the concentric phase of a movement pattern. So if you're coming up from a squat, breathe it, breathe out, sorry, as you come up. Valsalva may be warranted for structural exercises that load the axial skeleton, kind of like a deadlift here, um, because we want to take advantage of a little more abdominal pressure that way. Um, body weight training, because we can't load more weights, um, in order to increase intensity, we either have to increase the number of reps or we want to change the movement pattern so it's a little more challenging for the athlete. Um, core stability training, where we train the axial skeleton and also the girdles, the pelvic and the shoulder girdles. In order to isolate the core, however, um, we want to do it with or, or sorry, without the upper extremity or lower extremity contributions. So a plank here is a good example where you're using pretty much your core to stabilize yourself in that position for a long period of time. Uh, machine versus free weight training. There's advantages and disadvantages, of course, but with machine training, there's more stability so you can target specific muscle groups and isolate them. With free weights, however, um, there's more instability, which can be a good thing uh, for dynamic control. Instability devices like a BOSU ball here, for example, um, you can increase core activation, but also a good way to reduce the agonist muscle activation, right? So you're engaging your core more by having to stabilize on a unstable surface, but that also reduces the agonist uh, muscle kicking in for that exercise. Moving on to variable resistance training methods. There are three methods um, for applying overload to the body. So basically three ways to make the exercise more challenging. Constant external resistance through range of motion. So making sure that we're providing more and more resistance through a bigger range of motion as we advance. Accommodating the speed of movement, um, going a little slow, for example, when you're on your way down in the back squat, rather than doing it fast, is another way to alternate um, some of the parameters of training. And then there's also alternating with the resistance so the muscle maximizes force application uh, using modalities like a chain or a rubber band. Um, Chain supplemented exercises. Applying chains to free weight exercise allows a linear increase in applied resistance. So because of gravity, without the chains, we're not going to be experiencing the same amount of loading on the way down and on the way back up. But if we do use the chain, the intensity will gradually increase throughout that movement pattern. For example, a squat. Um, because the chains kind of hold the bar down, it'll slowly increase the amount of applied resistance, and that's what uh, this is saying, the first bullet point. Within repetition, post-activation potentiation effect may occur in response to a great, greater neural activation. Post-activation potentiation effect, just briefly, is how the neural adaptations from a more of a compound exercise that works out that movement pattern can benefit you in performance. For example, doing a, a squat, right? Doing a heavy loaded back squat can result in a, a better performance when you're having to do a vertical jump because of the neural adaptations. Decreasing resistance at the bottom portion of, um, let's go back to, or we can do bench press, right? So decreasing resistance at the bottom uh, portion of a bench press can cause a more rapid 
stretch shortening cycle. So if you use the band, for example, to decrease the amount of loading at the end, we can quickly come back up, and this is all that's saying. All right, moving on to our last slide here. Like I said, very short chapter. Variable resistance training methods continued. We can use resistance bands, like TheraBands, for example, that can offer some power of power or rate of force development benefits. So using them to quickly produce force in the shortest amount of time um, can be helpful. Non-traditional implement training methods, there are tons of them out there, but we're going to go over some of the basic ones. Tire flipping is shown in this picture here, and that's what that lady is doing. You want to raise a tire to hip or chest level, and then you want to rotate your hands so you can press forward um, and flip the tire. Log lifting, uh, there's farmer's walk where you can develop total body anaerobic and aerobic endurance as well as some grip strength and some core stability there. Um, and that's shown in this picture here. Dumbbells, kettlebell training. There's tons of different workouts that you can do using a kettlebell. Um, this guy here is using a kettlebell. And then there's also unilateral training where um, you use movements like lunges, um, step ups, or single leg squats. Sorry for that typo there, squat. Um, so yeah, that is all for today. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.